and the girl who placed first though, we got paired up to do synchronized diving for the Asian Games. <laughs> yeah, the Asian, Asian Age Group Championships, our senior fall. But the thing is, obviously I had to go back to Exeter, right? And so it was very interesting. I was training for this synchronized meet with my partner who's in Bangkok from our pool at Exeter via like video call. <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. That's so wild. Yes. And yes, you're like, telling me you started diving when you were in, in high school, right? When you were a junior. Yeah, at Exeter, junior uh, upper year. Okay, and two years later, you're, you're like representing Thailand at the Asia Games. What? Excuse me? Junior, junior. <laughs> <laughs> junior, junior. <laughs> Welcome, 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 guys. Today, I am joined by the lovely Joyce. Joyce is in Taiwan, and I'm still in Brazil. Joyce is going to talk a little bit about her transition from Exeter to Williams, as well as what she's been up to these days, her college experience, all that good stuff. You know, just to get us started, Joyce, do you want to share a quick 30-second, one-minute intro about who you are, what you do? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Joyce. I was a classmate of Kevin's at Exeter. I was a new upper, so I came in junior year of high school. And then after Exeter, I went to Williams College um, for four years, and I just graduated June 2020. I'm originally from Thailand, but I'm Taiwanese by blood. And now I am working in Taipei. Gotcha. Okay, cool. So you got the international experience. That's really awesome. I think there's quite a few students who are watching on the channel who are definitely not from the United States. Do you want to start us off with maybe high school Joyce? What was she like? And what were you involved in? Yeah, I feel like high school Joyce was very different person. <laughs> Feels like a lifetime ago, to be honest. But so, yeah, like I said, I moved to Exeter junior year. So I born and raised in Bangkok and I attended an international British school. And I was there like in the same school since, you know, those schools that's like you go in kindergarten and then you stay on till basically end of high school. So I was in one of those. <laughs> And I attended Exeter Summer School uh -huh. first. And that's how I first like got to know Exeter. And you know Tom, right? Tom, also class of 2016, my very good friend. He and I went to Exeter Summer School together and like became really fast friends. We had a great experience at Exeter Summer School. And both of us, I guess, decided to apply to Exeter regular. It was just serendipity that we both got in as new uppers and decided to go together. But I think my move or my decision to go to Exeter, there was like many layers to it. It was definitely also partly out of struggle at my old school. British curriculum um, is very, I guess, more niche than the American like liberal arts. I think I was craving a new experience because I had been in that school system for so long. I was also a gymnast at my old school for 11 years. Being a student athlete has been, I guess, part of my identity from the get-go. And at the time I was like going through a lot of, you know, body issues, I guess, like body dysmorphia. I had some phases with like disordered eating. Um, I think there was like this clash of Asian culture and Asian like female Asian expectations. I also had kind of bad experiences with some coaches who would like shame girls who were a bit bigger or whatever. So I think the U.S. Stood, stood out to me as you know this very progressive everyone is just like has their opportunity to do like pursue what they're passionate about and it was just like I had all these really bright shiny ideas about an American education I think I was fueled a lot by that desire to have just like a new worldview mm, mm. so I decided to go you know for junior year which is the toughest year they say <laughs> to move because you know, you go in, you only have two years to kind of build your social group and also get, you know, acquainted with teachers and stuff in time for like college admissions and, you know, all these recs and um, let alone like academics, right? And boarding school, obviously, like that's also a huge thing to get used to. So it was a really big risk that I took. And I remember the first time I drove up 
to my parents sent me and we drove up to um the admissions hall and I was like mm, maybe I don't want to come here like let's just go home <laughs> I think that was the hardest transition for me in many ways much harder than college so I feel like I ripped band-aid off there but I feel very grateful that Tom was there and we were kind of like in it together but so high school Joyce especially upper year I think coming into Exeter I was super shy super just like not confident not sure of myself even though I had this like seed in me that wanted to take risks and I knew that like this was going to be a good move for me in terms of like personal growth and like all that kind of stuff but I was still just like gosh like <laughs> you know what I mean like these buildings um, yeah like, <laughs> exactly just like this <laughs> my personality and confidence grew a lot because of my friendship with Tom and also a lot of other friends that I eventually made at Exeter like he'll tell you in the beginning when I wanted to like ask him to hang out or like go get a meal I'd be like oh Tom like do you think maybe you would want to get you know weather all or you know like I would just have all these like filler unnecessary like faff <laughs> about <laughs> you know asking to like hang out and stuff and he would just be like Joyce like ask me that again or just like tell me where you want to go <laughs> you know what I mean like tough love yeah I think I grew very quickly at Exeter and especially with Harkness mm -hmm. I feel like I learned the hard way that no one will speak up for you <laughs> you have to speak up for yourself and you know if you don't agree with something I feel like this is also maybe a bit of a culture clash but like in Asia or that's really generalized in my own experience in Bangkok I feel like if you ever disagreed with the teacher or what was being taught or if you just like had questions that was more outside the scope of what you were learning there was kind of an understanding that like there's no space for that there's no time for that um you just like learn what you're given but with Harkness and just like, I think the kind of students that go to Exeter, they're very inquisitive, right? And like, I learned very quickly <laughs> that I had to push myself in order to keep up. So diving. Oh, diving. Was also a big part of my Exeter experience. Like I said, I was, you know, gymnast and Exeter doesn't have a gymnastics team. And I thought that I did not want to, I didn't want to be part of a team yet. I think I was really overwhelmed with dorm life and just like getting used to Exeter. But so Tom is a swimmer and swimming and diving is one team. And because he was, you know, new upper, there's not a lot of us. He was like, Joyce, like you should join the diving team with me. It's basically like gymnastics. I had an aversion to just like wet locker room floors. <laughs> and I was just like, no, I will not do that. It sounds gross. And he was just like, that's a really bad reason not to try out. <laughs> So I ended up trying out. Diving was also a really small team. Everyone was just so welcoming and nice that I quickly, I felt safe in that environment. And I felt like, okay, like this is pretty cool. Gymnastics, you land with your feet, right? But then diving, you land with your head, your face sometimes. <laughs> but um, I, I think that was a really exciting chapter for me to explore. I'm really grateful for that experience too. And I think the student athlete like balance of life kept me motivated too and kept me organized in terms of, you know, studying when I was supposed to and taking good care of my sleep habits, my body, all that kind of stuff. So that was definitely cool. But senior year diving, I think I was also in more in my element then. And I was really grateful because I think a lot of diving teams struggle with the cohesiveness with the swim team. But I was really happy with senior year. I think there was really good rapport between the diving and swim team. And also I was lucky enough to be competing really well and I broke a, a pool record or a school record at Exeter. And then I was also voted MVP of the swim dive team and like amongst the swimmers too. They like noticed me and I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, thanks guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was super cool to experience that. But actually, the, so the summer before, I'm jumping timelines a lot, I'm sorry. But um, the summer before senior year, I was back home 
in Bangkok and my old gymnastics coach was a former Olympic diver actually mm. I was just like asking him for some pointers and like wanting to train with him and I got recruited into the junior national team for Thailand wow so okay <laughs> you were that good you were like <laughs> <laughs> I think I was very lucky I was in the right place at the right time <laughs> I like competed in a regional meet and I placed second with this girl who placed and the girl who placed first though we got paired up to do synchronized diving for the Asian games <laughs> yeah the Asian Asian age group championships our senior fall but the thing is obviously I had to go back to Exeter right and so it was very interesting I was training for this synchronized me with my partner who's in Bangkok from our pool at Exeter via like video call. <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. That's so wild. Yes. And yes, you're like, telling me you, you started diving when you were in, in high school, right? When you were a junior. Yeah, at Exeter, junior, uh, upper year. Okay, and two years later, you're, you're like representing Thailand at the Asia Games. What? Excuse me? Junior, <laughs> junior. <laughs> <laughs> junior, junior. <laughs> Very crazy, right? Because I left Exeter for like a week. I took a week off Exeter to fly home, compete, come back. I remember I had a math test the day after I came back. <laughs> yeah, so I also have fun memories of the pool at Exeter. I spent so much time during like the open swim hours, you know, recording and shout out to like my friends and teammates, Mickey and Luz um, from Exeter, because they were like helping me so much with like recording and just like getting in the pool with me and like keeping me company. So they also mm -hmm. did a huge part to keep me motivated to do that. That was crazy. Yeah. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. It's, it sounds like you really found community and they helped you grow as well. Made you feel comfortable yeah. with failing. Made you feel comfortable in this new environment. That's really awesome. Um, yeah. So yeah, maybe we can talk a little bit about transitioning sure. from high school to college. You continued to be a student athlete. In what ways was that similar or different? Uh, you can also talk a little bit about the transition. Yeah. So if I'm totally honest, I... I'm not did not hear, know about Williams at all until senior year at Exeter when my college counselor, you know, recommended it to me and was like telling me to look into all these liberal arts colleges because I I thought I was riding this high, you know, coming into Exeter for two years. I wanted to keep that up, I guess. So that's why I was looking small. I really valued the amount of growth that I experienced and how fast I think I was pushed to grow at Exeter. So that's why I wanted small class sizes, a lot of opportunities to like be in, have one-on-one -on -one discussions with teachers, professors, that kind of stuff. So I knew pretty early on I wanted a small liberal arts college. Williams is definitely up there. So I was gunning for it, though actually my top choice was Pomona. But anyway, I decided to go to Williams and I was really, really excited. My dad would joke that like, oh, like Williams is perfect. It's in the middle of nowhere. You would just, you know, focus on your studies. That's great. <laughs> yes. Well, what are your it's thoughts very... on the location? Did you think that like yeah. it being a little bit out of the way, was that a pro or a con? Yeah, a little bit of both. Also, I guess from a, the perspective of an international student, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's quite tough, especially if, you know, you grew up in a city like I grew up in Bangkok, it's a very different experience. Like Exeter was small, right? right but right. I feel like the town in Exeter, there was still like, you know, some restaurants, stuff going on. There was the feeling of like, there are still people though around. But at Williams, I feel like it was just nature, <laughs> which, you know, if you're really into that, it's like great you know hiking trails and mm. all this very beautiful stuff but I think it did after the you know like honeymoon period of getting to college I think it did affect me um a little bit feeling so isolated out there as an international student if you're trying to travel home it can also be really tough because to get to an international airport it's either Boston Logan or JFK and it's you know three and a half hour drive to either but if you take a bus it's easily like at least five hours if you're going to JFK at least you know let alone delays and whatnot so tr like traveling internationally is quite tough but it's definitely also workable 
there are options. The school also has some shuttles um, to these spots during like the holidays, but it's just really tough to find the right, because a lot of international flights are odd hours, right? So anyway, but that's definitely something to kind of consider and sit with, I think, when considering Williams. So like I said, I wanted small school, academic heavy, but then also I wanted to continue diving. So that's why I thought Div 3 would be perfect for me. And so I did not choose to, you know, go through the recruiting phase or like that route. I also wanted to have a little bit of flexibility because I was lucky enough to have like quick success and like achievements in diving but I also feel there was a lot of imposter syndrome like vibes going on too because I was really nervous about going up against divers from like diving since forever so I walked on to the team at Williams and I loved my first year being on that team I think it was such a like inclusive environment if I thought the swim dive team rapport was good Exeter senior year this is like (laughs) I I really appreciated how the team was conscious because I know that it wasn't like that before and a lot of divers who came before me at Williams worked really hard to kind of advocate for divers and to be more like seen on the team and so I really owe it to them for like putting in all that work so that when I came in I had a quite a positive experience on that team and everyone was just like in and out of the pool so supportive but collegiate athletics <laughs> is also next level I think with training times and just the caliber that they expect from you in terms of diving high school is only one meter springboard now we have three meter springboard weight training that was new for me yeah girls go hard too <laughs> and yeah it was great I I felt like super just like inspired by all the athletes on, you know, all the girls on my team. I generally think my freshman year experience would not have been what it was if it weren't for the team. So I was really grateful for that. And I think Williams also does a really good job with freshman year experiences. So I don't know if you're familiar with the entry system that Williams does. So, but also I'm not sure if like things are different now because of COVID. But so when I was there for freshman year, entries are like, there's two freshman housing situations. Each like section or wing of the freshman housing is an entry, uh, which is about when I was a freshman, 20-ish freshmen to two JAs, junior advisors. Now I think they expanded it to like 40 students to like four JAs. But you're basically, it's like your living quarters. And like they try to make it a microcosm of the wider Williams community. So they really try to have it be, you know, diverse. And you just live with them for the entire year. It's really, I guess, hit or miss. Mm. Um, Some entries are closer than others. It also depends on your JAs. I was lucky enough to have amazing JAs and like such a nice entry. (laughs) Like things were just like always happening in the common room. And it was, I had my own room too. So I had my little space if I needed it. But then I always had people to hang out with if I wanted to and like come out. I think Williams does a really good job with like also orientation. I felt like freshman year was pretty easy to make friends. You know, there were many opportunities to also try new things. So yeah, freshman year was, it was like Camp Williams. (laughs) It felt like, you know, super just like busy and fun. Yeah, so freshman year was good. I think academically, Exeter did set me up really well to handle that like academic pressure. Yeah. So that was the trajectory um, freshman year. And I don't know if you want to go into sophomore year, maybe. Yeah, talk to us about sophomore year. I'm also curious about what a typical day in your life looked like at Williams. Like how often were you training with the diving team? How much time uh, a day, a week were you? Uh, did you spend studying? So <laughs> it was quite tough because we had early morning weightlifting. Mm. At, depends on like which weight group you're in, but it could be as early as like 5, 5.30, which is tough because swimming and diving is a winter sport. So the snow and, you know, my hair would freeze even though I had like a hat and a hoodie on after. But weightlifting in the morning for an hour, then we'd go to class. I personally like to have morning classes, especially if I was already up so early, just like get all my classes 
done in the morning. In the afternoon, then I would be in the library studying, studying the team or friends. And then practice would be um, 4 p.m. onwards for at least two hours, sometimes a little more if we had like an ab workout at the end or whatever. Yeah, it was, I feel like very different to like even my own understanding of myself because like I said I was like super shy and like I would say I'm a pretty cautious person but then like diving is super like I feel like extreme and you know you fall it's ugly like my teammates say I have an alter ego and at at college my my team in college would call me diva j when I'm diving (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> which is so funny but I really feel like diving was an outlet or sports in general for me was an outlet to kind of be this like assume this badass <laughs> kind of person <laughs> and like try to be this just like fearless yeah athlete and go for it you know because with diving you can't really half-ass it you know mm-hmm. you got to just go for it that was I think a really cool part of my identity to explore I was just saying at Williams all classes end at four because there are a lot of student athletes actually so mm. they do that to accommodate for sports practices for us that like practice was two hours ish sometimes a bit more if there are ab workouts that we do but then it's team dinner and then usually more studying after that Mm. but sometimes I was lucky enough to catch a break and just like go back to my entry and hang out with entry mates or friends and you know get enough rest and then repeat (laughs) awesome well tell us about this extracurricular you did at Williams oh and also maybe you can guide us through you talked about freshman year camp Williams talk to us a little bit about sophomore junior senior year maybe which year was the easiest or hardest what were some of the highs and lows and then Mm -hmm. maybe that can transition into how you ended up trying out for NBC I feel like I was riding this high from freshman year and then sophomore year was the toughest year for me I I got a back injury Mm. um pretty early on into sophomore year like during the summer actually it was just like some fluke there wasn't this one big accident but I think having done competitive gymnastics all that time and then now with diving I think I could feel my body was reaching its limit and I tried to train through it push through but then it got worse there was like a while I was kind of like the hunchback of Notre Dame I (laughs) could not straighten my back and I got it checked out and turns out I had a slip disc and it was actually pretty serious because it was pinching my nerve. Luckily, I was back home in Thailand when this happened, but my doctors were like, this is not something you should take risks with or play with because if it pinches your nerve more, you could lose, you know, feeling in your legs, maybe become paralyzed, all this kind of stuff. Very scary stuff. And obviously my parents were in Thailand. So if I went back to the States, continued diving, if something happened, they would not, you know, be able to just come over. So I went back to sophomore year already feeling a little scared what that meant. Long story short, I decided to to quit diving. And that was a really tough decision to make because being a competitive athlete was such a big part of my life. And that was really tough. And I think what I could not have prepared myself for, though, was losing the team. There were some good friends that I kept after I quit the team. But then I think I realized how you're like engulfed by the team, I think, to a certain degree. It's easy to slip into having the team be your entire social life. And I think that was very much the case or that's something I had to reckon with and kind of find my footing outside the team then which was really tough because some friends you thought were super close um but then turns out it was maybe just because of circumstance and you know a lot of just like hard pills to swallow and I struggled a lot not knowing now what what to do outside of classes because you get used to that rhythm of just like a packed schedule and now you have all this free time I could feel myself losing my like sense of time too like I would procrastinate more and I never used to do that I just become really lethargic and obviously I was also trying to recover from this back injury with physical therapy and whatnot so it was just a very low time for me sophomore year and on a whim though super random side story Williams gives out like free music lessons to all students you can just sign up for it I think I was having some sort of like identity crisis and I was like I'm gonna take a music class I'm gonna learn an instrument 
So I learned the saxophone. <laughs> I learned to play what? the saxophone for four years. Cool outcome. Very sad origin story, but it was a cool outcome. I ended up, yeah, taking saxophone classes for two semesters, just like for fun. Like looking back, that was really cool, I guess, <laughs> to do. And it, you know, let me channel my energy somewhere. And I'm grateful for Franny, my friend, and Will, who came to my um, saxophone recital <laughs> at the end of the year. Because as part of like, they give you this class for free, but then you have to perform at the end. I remember I performed Can't Help Falling in Love with you by Elvis. Yeah, so that was cool. Sex <laughs> <Bon> Joyce, <laughs> one year only. <laughs> and so that paved the way for junior year, which I took the entire year to study abroad at LSE. My lowest of lows at Williams, I think this is also when I struggled the most with the location being so out there. I just craved being back in a city, which is why I thought London. It also made the most sense with my studies, long story short. So yeah, I spent my junior year abroad in London and I was able to reconnect with some old friends from Bangkok because a lot of my friends ended up going to school in England, which was really cool. And it was a very different experience to the US. The English system is la like second half of the year heavy because the only grades that count are your exam grades. Um, you know how like we have like a cumulative, cumulative GPA, so right. we have to be on top of stuff all the time, kind of. But then also if you do poorly on one thing, you can have other opportunities to bring it back, whatever. Yeah, in England, their system is your grade. A lot of the quantitative subjects that are like this, your grade is purely reflective of your exam results, which to me is terrifying. <laughs> Even sometimes essays that you do during the year don't count for anything. It was a completely different approach to academics, but I think it was cool to be part of that big, big school feel, like lecture halls and all that. I guess the best of both worlds from, you know, small liberal arts, Williams, and then LSE. And what about senior year? So senior year, I was really nervous about going back because at this point, I was a year removed and... A lot of my friends were older students and they had graduated at this mm -hmm. point. In keeping with my, I guess, theme and spirit of just like being brave and trying new things, I have always been a fan of dancing and dancers. I remember you break oh. dancing at Exeter and like, yeah, in like assembly on the stage and I'd be like, oh my gosh, like that's so cool and like the confidence I feel like you and dancers like exude <laughs> I have always just been like fangirly <laughs> you know in the audience so I always was fascinated by dance was not confident confident enough to do it but then I think senior year I was like there will never be a chance like this again I went in and I tried out for NBC Williams's hip-hop dance team and I should say though I when I was in London I did take some dance classes with some friends like for fun so it like was already like creeping on me this dance bug but I definitely did not was not like that good and like memorizing choreo different world <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 I really just went in with a no regrets attitude and tried out made the team and I was so so happy and I think like that was honestly the biggest blessing of my college experience because I felt the most I think myself with the dance team and I think I had also come on this really long journey at this point starting from Bangkok to coming to the states and figuring out who I was there it was just the serendipity and like good timing of all of that was the biggest blessing and like the team was so like open and kind to me and I feel like I was also ready to be confident because I struggled with that for so long and so I think that totally made my experience at Williams. <laughs> That's fantastic and how did you end up in Taipei? When campus closed last March I went back home to Bangkok first to finish off the semester virtually right and like that was crazy 
tough and but around like the summertime I was wanting to find different opportunities because at first I was actually going to go back to the LSE for my master's but okay. since it was going to be virtual I and they weren't also taking deferrals I decided to withdraw and I wanted to get some work experience and so I I'm lucky enough that I was able to come to tai- Taiwan safely and smoothly, like in terms of visa and borders and all that kind of stuff during the pandemic. So I wanted to, for one, tai- Taiwan was doing really well and we have been doing well in terms of the pandemic. So I can't say that that wasn't a big part of it. But I also felt like I wanted to improve my Chinese. Mm. because I think it would be a shame to say I'm Taiwanese but not be able to speak fluently so I wanted to reconnect with language and culture here and also my extended family my grandparents are also getting older and I you know have not spent a lot of time with them in the past so it made the most sense so I came to Taiwan like uh, end of August and I enrolled in a language program uh, at a university here and then it was like it's not like a university degree or anything it's just like a language school also serendipitously found like this job opportunity at Merck. So I'm working in PR now. Yes. <laughs> I do a lot of translating and writing, also a lot of ad hoc tasks here and there, but also a lot of like PR collaterals and decks and graphics, all this kind of like media assets I prepare. I'm just grateful for any like opportunity because it's I know it's really hard, especially given the pandemic and stuff, right? To find anything at this point. So I'm also really grateful that my boss and colleagues are all super supportive and amazing. And you know that it's an international company. So I can kind of get the best of both cultures and worlds. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So, and do you, what's yeah. your long-term plan, Joyce? Any, any ideas or even a short-term plan for like the next couple of years? Do you plan on staying in Taiwan or do you want to go back and get your master's? So I definitely think I will be here for maybe the rest of the calendar year. Mm-hmm. Um, I do want to pursue a master's at some point. That would be really cool. Um, and if I were to do that, I would definitely go back to either the U.S. or England, I think. Got to save up the monies first. <laughs> That's definitely a goal of mine to save up for a master's. And I'm tentatively thinking about international relations and diplomacy as something to pursue. Ooh. Because I... I'm realizing that that's where my interests lie. I mean, given my background and I mean, language skills wise, I, you know, my Chinese is improving a lot and I can speak Thai, you know, English, took Spanish um, mm. in school. So I hope to be back, I think, in the States because all, all my friends are there, you mm. know, at this point because I spent my formative years there. I would definitely like to go back. My parents will probably stay in Thailand um, and retire there. So it would be, you know, I would also like to be close to family and stuff. So I think that's something I need to figure out later down the line. But I'm also really lucky that on the spectrum of Asian parents, they're very open-minded and supportive and have always just like pushed me to decide for myself what I want to do and have that space to explore which I'm very lucky to be able to do. I guess just like some concluding reflections because I know early on I had said first of all that like I saw America as like this bright shiny place that you know I was kind of escaping from some things I was struggling with in Bangkok and I saw America as this like free-for-all like playground now that I could explore and you know but obviously it's a lot more complicated than that and I quickly also learned that I had a very romanticized idea of what America was and is and I mean especially with what's been going on recently I think it's important to also put in that like it was also a very rude awakening for me because I grew up not being a minority I grew up in a homogenous like Asian society and being introduced to that experience of being a a minority that later in my life young adult life was very hard to adjust to so a lot of times I didn't know how to handle 
handle it. And I was often confused, especially when it comes to like social things like from friends your age and, you know, dealing with stereotypes and expectations. So luckily, I grew up also speaking and learning English. So I can kind of pass as Asian American, but obviously like inside, I don't feel like American at all, right? And so throughout Exeter and Williams, I think there's been many times where this was like in the back of my mind and it was also a very like tangible struggle, I would say, to find my footing in America too as a young Asian woman student. And like there's a lot of like power dynamics too with professors and stuff and like hierarchies that you're ingrained in, like ingrained to respect from like Asian culture. And so I think I found it hard to stand up for my like there was also there was a professor at Williams who, even though I repeatedly introduced myself and reminded him that, you know, I'm Thai, Taiwanese, he would always say this Sino-Thai girl or this, you know, I've also never like heard of that term being used to like describe a person. And then obviously like with some things the now very unoriginal like oh you're the prettiest Asian I've seen and like those backhanded compliments you know that is just upsetting though right I wanted to just put it out there that like for international students there is quite a big curve to grow and get used to and learn about being like in America so I wanted to put that out there but then also from like my personal perspective and experience I also wanted to say that like my experience at Exeter was always like you know the growth yes confidence Williams amazing you know but there were also I I think that growth trajectory is definitely a very zoomed out bird's eye view look right like there's all these little glitches and bumps throughout the way and like even like really low dips like Williams um sophomore year and there were some times where I would just be in my dorm room like crying calling my mom because like I could only call her at odd hours because of time difference things like that like feeling jealous of friends who could just drive home on the weekend to see their family or spend like holidays with them right it was also not all smooth sailing despite yes like growing so much as a person and student there were many times too that I felt like I've come so far from home and for what there were times that was it was just that hard and I attribute all of the comfort I found in like the friends I've made I feel like I'm I was really lucky to have those friendships to keep me going and the last like thing I wanted to say was so at Williams we have this thing that they they call it effortless perfection that it seems like everyone just seems to be effortless effortlessly perfect yeah and I'm sure at Yale I mean Exeter was definitely like that I think a lot of these elite institutions are like that that I wouldn't want young students hearing my story which you know I feel like on paper looks like I've achieved all this you know like out of nowhere I become this like diver with a pool record and you know national team this that saxophone and like dance after just like doing it for a couple months I'm like suddenly so I I wouldn't want young students to misunderstand or people to misunderstand my story of being like yes effortless perfection that this all just happened because um that's definitely not the takeaway and not the story I experienced I would say I think I tried to make lemons out of lemonade, as they say, and take on all these new opportunities and take it with stride and being always like the new person in that club or team or whatever it was. I think I approached it with just I'm here to learn to like I know nothing about this or whatever I want to learn I want to know what it's like to be good at this and I think it was my approach and my attitude to learning and being open to learn was where I found confidence and also the success or whatever achievements that come after that is just the cherry on top right because that's not the main reason that I did any of that it was just seeing like what I 
could achieve for myself. And like, the best thing is just when you surprise yourself, right? And at the end of the day, I think that's the most meaningful thing. Like no external validation can top that. So I wanted like young students to know that you don't need to have all these accolades, you know, in your under your belt to be confident or go to a good college or whatnot. Like I don't want them to feel intimidated by that. I I think it's definitely about the way you approach things and your perspective, your resilience and just also your willingness to be open and explore so yeah I thought it would be important to like just verbalize that because I think it's not said enough especially in our like schools so yeah I 100% agree that effortless perfection there's something that I think it was originally from Stanford like a little swimming duck syndrome oh yeah where it's, it's like on the surface the duck is just like very casually meandering across the the pond and then underneath the water everyone is really like paddling as hard as they can yeah. and then I think the point that you mentioned about just approaching these activities with some, you know surprising yourself and the goal of almost just trying to be like the best version of you it sounds really cliche but I think approaching these activities with that mentality in college because in college like you're gonna get there and realize like wow these people have been doing xyz activity for like 10 years or these people are like so crazy good yeah. like should I even be in the same space I think the attitude to have is I want to try it. I want to do it. I want to be better than I was, you know, three months, six months, a year ago. Try it. Surprise yourself. Impress yourself. Humble yourself. I think we can all take away is just Joyce's attitude. And that's part of the reason why she, in my opinion, is so successful as a human being. Thank you so much, Kevin. You're welcome. (laughs) Also, I realized, I also realized I forgot to say that I was a sociology major (laughs) in my introduction. (laughs) I was too nervous. (laughs) But yes, I was a sociology major at Williams. Gotcha. We might have to get you back here another time so you can talk about the academics. This time you were (laughs) on sports, extracurriculars, and life adjustment. I mean, I I bet I could have you again and we could talk about academics and all other dimensions of college and more about culture and things like that. This was definitely one of my favorite interviews. I love the international perspective and it really helps. And so many of the viewers, I think like 50 50% or 45% are just not American. A lot of them are from Asia or India or Africa. So I hope you guys find this helpful. Or from the Middle East. Amazing. Kids from the Middle East too. Yay, international students. (laughs) Uh, I want to make sure you Well, it would be my honor to be back if you will have me. So thank you, Kevin, for saying that. All right. Well, okay, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this interview. (laughs) Don't forget to drop a like, comment if you have any questions for Joyce. And I'll, I'll bother her and see if she can respond to some of your queries. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so much. And we'll catch you at the next one. Bye.